Hopefully. You see, you know. Oh, it's so like a thank you. Hello and welcome to the channel. For today's adventure, we continue our exploration of the World War II forts of Port Elizabeth. Today, turning our attention to the Sea Hill military site in Cape Recife. Joining us for today's adventure are radar specialists Goose and T and Commander Mac. Hey T. Hey. Hey Goose. <laughs> Hello Mac. The site is located in a nature reserve area, but the permits aren't too expensive according to the website. Uh, can I please have a permit for uh, nature? I just want for today. Okay, it's 107 cash on. 107. So it's on the website, 31. 31, right? So a weekly permit? Yes, sir. It says 32.10. Look at that. Yeah. And the annual is 163. Ah! I think must just change yes. that. You? The annual is 544. Sure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So if anyone's planning to visit the site, don't trust the pricing on the website. Rather phone ahead. How's it? Where's the fort? The old fort. The old fort. Dead, is it that one? Is it past yeah. the penguin? Uh, yeah, you passed okay. the penguin. Don't dare I just have to make a U-turn here then. If you know what you're looking for, the fort will stick out like a sore thumb. But on further inspection, you'll see that the site's got a lot more to offer than just the single building. In addition to the Sea Hill Fort, which only provided observational support, this site was also utilized by the Special Signal Services, the radar arm of the South African Corps of Signals. Also utilizing the site were the artillery personnel, but due to wartime secrecy, the two groups strictly never spoke to each other, hence they were unaware of each other's functions. I think it's dirt. Following a modern hiking trail going through the buildings, we found what looks to be the original access point. The is not deep like this, he looks a poiki. Nasi fondasi, see it all. Looking at the original layout, these stairs most likely went down to the roadside, with the foundation behind me likely being a guardhouse or access control. Keep in mind this entire site was fenced off at one stage. During my research for this video, I came across an old map which showed every building on the site and detailed the function of each. The building we're looking at now is described as the recreation room. Let's hope that it gets more recreational as we get to the other side. Liffy, you know how come all the barracks are built? Because this is not for the sea. Apart from marks in the wall where wall fixtures used to be, it's very difficult to figure out exactly what each room is used for. But on the opposite side of the building, we have this very nice open plan room. And then T spots something interesting. You see, yeah. Time to get a closer look. It's kind of cool, huh? It's difficult to figure out what a recreation room would have looked like in the 1940s, but at least we know it had a fireplace. I'm imagining a pool table in the middle of the floor, dartboard against the wall, maybe a bar in the corner. But for a top secret military base, who knows? Wow, Yo. For those viewers that might have a little bit more to share, leave in the comments what you think would have been in the recreation room for this place. Going up a small flight of stairs, we get to the next building. <laughs> this building housed four male personnel. The courses. Um, yeah, the These personnel consisted of a commanding officer, two technicians and an engine minder, the latter responsible for keeping the generator on-site operational. <laughs> the walls bearing evidence of the lived-in condition. <laughs> Sure. 
Dat is iets wat hulle gereeld na gevat het. Wat zie je? Is dit elektriciteit? Ja, dat is die light switch. Echt een lijkt. Ja, een korte pijpen. Ja. <laughs> Oké. Okay. Moving on from there, we get to a building that extends a little further back than the others. Referring back to my old map. So this is where the personnel had their meals. Just by the entrance there's a small room with a corridor that opens up to the left, which probably led to the dining room, which had a nice big window looking out towards the sea. To the right of this we have a small room with a window looking out towards the rest of the building at the back, which could have easily have been the kitchen with enough space for a fridge, pantry, stove and everything you need to make meals. The old articles that I referred to also made mention of a cook that was permanently stationed at this location. Hey, they choose to double the bread to Fianna. Past the nice and wide dining room window, we get to the side entrance that leads to the back of the building, but it's very overgrown. Okay, you said we're not wrong. Hey, rest for the part check with the drone. I think all the good is here, I've got to Moving along to the next building, I refer back to the old articles and we get to a very, very interesting part of our story. According to the records, the whole cluster of barracks in this area was built solely for 18 female signal personnel, comprising of an officer, a warrant officer, 15 operators, and the cook that I mentioned earlier. The men that were assigned to the site filled the support roles, while the women were responsible for the operational side. The radar operators worked five shifts around the clock with three girls per shift, manning the JB, the original radar set developed in Johannesburg hence the name. It's interesting to note that females were also preferred in the artillery division for the range finding function, as it was widely believed that for these functions you needed a feminine touch and attention to detail. In order to avoid any crossover, the artillery personnel did not share these quarters, but they were bussed in daily from Umud. Moving to the next building, we address the point of hygiene. So looking into the window on the side, we can see evidence of where used to be showers with the toilets at the back. This room with a signature hole in the roof might have been the boiler room for warm water. But now unfortunately repurposed for hikers with a number two. Reaching our last building, it's almost an exact copy of the one we've seen before. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Hmm? Was a gangie in the middle geweest. Unlike the other building though, which has rooms of different sizes, this one has eight rooms of identical size, with a passage straight through the middle and an entrance either side. This building was for the operators, with two sharing each room, which means the other building housed the officer and warrant officer, and possibly the cook. Can I see the gangie in there? Oh, it's fun. Insulation. I saw the opportunity and we just couldn't help ourselves. You're like in a Scooby Doo scene, Marky, so. If you use your imagination, you can almost see how it was. With the buildings now just being an empty shell of what they used to be in the 1940s. During operation, this radar barracks cluster was completely encircled with barbed wire fencing and was patrolled and protected by the native military corps, who, although they were also based on the site, their buildings have since been demolished. A short way up the hill we get to our next point of interest, a peculiar square shaped little building, simple in appearance, small windows, a door facing the ocean, very few people of the time would know what this building was used for. First thing is always to check if there's someone inside. 
Oh, yes. sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. Ja. Ach ja, droog niet zo. Hallo. I've heard rumors of a hippie colony that used to live in this abandoned radar tech building. Whether there's any truth to that rumor can be disputed, but one thing is for sure that whoever drew this wall mural was an extremely talented artist. Shit is mooi, eh? So as I've mentioned previously, contained within this hut used to be our very own South African developed radar set called the JB, named after the place where it was developed in Johannesburg. And there were three female operators which manned this building at any given time. 24 hours a day. This building was also as far as what the signal services or radar personnel were allowed to go. Because the next building on the way to the top of the hill belonged to the artillery personnel. And we know by now that the signal services and the artillery personnel were theoretically not allowed to speak to each other due to the wartime secrecy policies. What is also well documented is that the artillery corps preferred female operators for the observation and range finding functions. With this bungalow most probably serving a daytime support building function to the observation post on the top of the hill. It boasts a fireplace, some showers, a small closet like room that might have acted as a storage area. But no sleeping quarters, as we know that the operators were bust in from Umut every day. And then finally we get to that old familiar camouflage design. As if the architect was riding a very bumpy road as he drew the walls. But immediately something looks a little off. Keeping in mind that we flew the drone after visiting the fort, I lay my eyes on this building for the first time. Oh, shit. Starting on the positive note, there's a little boardwalk that allows anybody to get onto the roof of this fort, which likely led to the negative point of this fort. The whole freaking roof is caved in. A quick glance reveals that a few post-war mods have been done to this fort in the form of cement blocks that have been added most likely for people to sit on and have a picnic. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall when this thing came down, that must have been dramatic. This cool! But for those of you without an imagination, here's Goose's rendition. <laughs> yeah. And he leer is <laughs> stabil. So the ladder to the main room is in exactly the same position as Amsterdam Hook, but no shaft and no secret room below. <laughs> So this extremely large collapsed concrete roof section is still very much loose and completely unsafe. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that this thing could still come down at any second. So forgive me if I don't get directly underneath to take some shots. Interestingly, this fort also has an opening in the floor from the main chamber to the bottom level like at Schoenmakers Kop, and also features the three concrete pillars which were used to mount the depression range finder used in the observation post. Moving right along we get to the bottom level and see if there's anything interesting to find. The one thing that all three forts we've visited so far have in common is that all of them have got two distinct windows on the right hand side on the bottom level, with the entry being on the left. Mindful of the collapsed roof above me, all that the front is going to get is a cheeky little peek before we head back. On the bottom level we can see that the door is still intact and shut, and looking up the side we see the ladder going to the roof. Funny enough there's no ladder from the bottom to the main chamber. Just an opening. Now I wouldn't have known this if I hadn't had the old map, but behind the observation fort there's a rifleman's post and a small toilet. is a black kitty. And then, you have to go to the toilet. 
Although there's very little left of the rifleman's post, the toilet is in a slightly better condition and we can guess exactly how it worked. It was quite a crude setup but it got the job done. Imagine sitting on the throne to this view. Remember when I mentioned the engine minder earlier in the video? So his main responsibility was to tend to the generator which supplied electricity to the entire site. The generator room was too overgrown to reach by foot, but we got some drone footage from above. Now that we've covered the observation posts of Schoenmakerskop, Amsterdam Hook and Sea Hill, it's time to look at the final piece of this puzzle, the Port War Signal Station of Cape Recife. This building was recommended as urgently necessary in a letter on the 19th of June 1940 as the one in Port Elizabeth was not able to command all directions of approach to the port and all three observation posts reported directly to this command center and the building is still in use today as an Airbnb for the Cape Recife Lighthouse. Overall the Sea Hill military site is an interesting look back in time, providing us with a glimpse of how things were during wartime in Port Elizabeth. Everything from wartime secrecy to strategy to the personnel that they preferred in certain roles. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and if you like the Forts of Port Elizabeth series and you want to see more, subscribe to the channel and get notified when the next video comes out. There's quite a few sites that I still need to cover in this series, so stay tuned and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.